Welcome everybody to episode 36 of Inside the Video Store. Still going, still going. Um, what have we got today? Uh, it's kind of a bit of a, a rush job to be honest, people. Today's delivery has just turned up the second. Uh, I had to order from HMV instead because Amazon didn't have uh, the main title in stock. But still we have a nice little stack of releases here, albeit um, potentially missing four. Um, possibly, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, these are all last week's, uh, who can't fit anywhere at the moment, so I'm waiting for January to come around, which is my first opportunity to build a new fixture. Um, too busy uh, in the run to Christmas, obviously. Um, so that's, uh, they, they're just going to stack and stack and stack right through to Christmas, so that should be as tall as the ceiling, most likely. Um, but there'll be loads of room after Christmas where I can got amazing really exciting plans for the way I'm going to develop a few little areas which, which will be really really cool really really uh, sort of highlight the nicheness of, of so many nicheness nichety hmm. um, of so many films that, that, that we have and yeah just, just to really show off the, the the oddity and what makes this place different from uh, you know your generic streaming places but 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 till january they're just going to sit there for, for the time moment because because that's all i can do really there's no room to put them but they're all on the, on the database so if anyone spies them then they're welcome to request them and, and there they are uh so yeah we've got the new films we've got some films on loan we've got some vhs to have a look at we've got some sleeping giants that could do with some uh attention and we've got a what's in the box it's a bit of a strange what's in the box it's a bit of a split one i've got half a delivery there and half a delivery here um and a delivery that i thought wasn't even going to turn up so it's a bit of a hodgepodge but there's some good stuff there interesting stuff but let's uh, crack on and uh, oh i think we need some uh, some fluids on board don't you uh so let's crack on yeah, um, I did have penciled in four really exciting um, Blu-rays that were due to be released this week by uh, a company called Modern Films. Modern Films, UK-based. Um, they're all listed uh, as being released this week. Uh, it was four quite niche films, all of whom I've forgotten the names of. Um, I think they're all World Cinema as well. They all look really, really cool. Um, but sadly, none of them uh, are in stock anywhere. I've written to Modern Film, but they haven't replied, which is kind of a bit annoying, really. But there we go. Um, so I, I did think I would have a very sort of eclectic mix of world cinema to go with these. But uh, as of yet, they're, they're AWOL. So we shall see. Lots of dog hairs. Um, but for now, we have... Uh, these got still got the stickers on because they, I've just literally opened the box. Uh, this is a film based on the best-selling book by Colleen Hoover. No idea. Um, and it is. It ends with us. It ends with us. Uh, and it, it, it tells the empowering story of Lily Bloom, played by Blake Lively, who's grappling with a painful past and embarks on new life in Boston, embracing her artistry and passionately pursuing her dream of opening her own flower shop. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, people are really after this. I've been asked several times over the last few weeks when it's coming in. And to be honest, this is the kind of stuff I've been moaning about that isn't coming into rental stores, well, isn't coming onto physical media. So it, it's really nice to see a film that is more generic. And I don't mean that as, a, as an insult. I mean that as a good thing that might get my, um, you know, my fair weather renters back on board. So that that's pretty cool to have that. Um, second up, also on a DVD and Blu-ray, is Dee Dee, uh, which looks really, really cool. It's set in 2008, uh, and it's about an impressionable 13-year-old uh, Taiwanese-American boy who um, kind of learns a little bit about how to, I don't know, learns a little bit about him, how to skate, how to flirt, and how to love his mom. Uh, it's released by Medium Rare, licensed from Universal. I got a message this week from Tom Jolliffe, 
who I think he's seen this and he seemed uh, very complimentary about it. So, um, yeah, I didn't hesitate to get a, a DVD and a Blu-ray of this. It's a, quite a niche little film, but it looks absolutely fantastic. And the reviews it's got are, are quite phenomenal. So uh, that should be absolutely great. Um, direct to video uh, stuff here. Um, nothing of note. Emil Hirsch. Is in this as well. Robert Davy is still alive. That's very cool, isn't it? I've got a story about Robert Davy. I'm not going to tell you. Um, and um, sorry, so I want to secrecy. Uh, High Flyers released this film, generic direct-to-video movie, but um, you know the type of stuff that's a, a very decent bit of shelf filler, only on DVD. Now this, this is a baffling one, isn't it? Only on DVD, this one. you got Liam Hemsworth, you got Luke Hemsworth, you got Russell Crowe, directed by William Eubank, who, in my opinion, is one of the best action directors working today. Very impressive body of work. Uh, I've seen this, I saw it on one of the streaming sites, and it's a, it's, it's a really, it, it's a decent film, if, if you like a bit of military-themed hogwash. Um, it, it's very entertaining, it's very well made, very well directed, and it's only on blue uh, it's only on DVD in this country. Only on DVD. That, that's a weird one. It seemed to me like this would be the type of film that would sell gangbusters on, on, on Blu-ray. But Signature, I've only put out on DVD. That, that's a weird one. That's a weird one. However, I snatched this from my other pile over there. On Blu-ray, here we are. Land of the Bad. Uh, released in Germany, because the Germans know what they're doing. Um, yeah, it released in Germany on Blu-ray, um, and I think it'll rent on Blu-ray, to be honest. Uh, I, I do recommend this film. A great deal, very compelling, um, and yeah, just a baffling decision. But we'll, we'll get to, like, European Blu-rays later. So that's the contemporary releases. Nice little uh, quartet, quite frankly. Not bad. It's something for everyone, shall I say. Um, two boutiques out this week. Well, there was a Masters of Cinema uh, box set for like 89 The silent films from 1913 to 1919. They look great, but just couldn't justify that price. I mean, I, I know why they charged it, because it's worth that price, but I might pick that one up after Christmas if... Um, well, ironically, I, I probably just spent that amount on Asylum movies. So there you go. That just highlights the insanity of this store, really. You know, do you have a, a classic, you know, monumental piece of cinema history? Or do you have eight shitty asylum movies? I go for eight shitty asylum movies every time because that's the type of uh, moronic businessman I am. Um, we have the Blair Witch Project. Uh, quite a momentous release. We have a, uh, a restoration of both the theatrical and the festival cuts so uh, I'm not sure who of you has seen the festival cut and how much uh, different it will be the price point on this was a little bit high this was 21.99 standard blu-ray um, two discs yeah but 21.99 just seems to be a little bit uh, excessive quite frankly um, you know there's no hard case there's no massive book with it I don't know um, maybe it's me being a, a cheapskate but uh, I did think the price point on this was a little bit high because uh, this other one was pretty much the same price and this is Haxan uh, an iconic film from 1922 um, yeah mixes documentary and fiction a series of eerie vignettes depict images of sorcery and evil on screen. From representations of occultism and religious hypocrisy to a chilling witch hunt in the Middle Ages. That's a great... I mean, Radiance in October. I know it's November, but, you know, in this four-week stretch, Radiance have put out some quite phenomenal uh, pieces of work on physical media, and they should be lauded for that, and certainly when it comes to working out my budgets for 2025 i'm going to try and pick up as many indicate um radiance movies as possible because i think they deserve it the effort that's put in to their releases is, is quite something so credit to them they are growing in my estimation 
uh, even though some of their releases might not be my cup of tea, but, uh, you know, this isn't Dave's, Dave's video store, well, it is Dave's video store, but, you know, you've got to cater to all tastes, so that is this week's uh, new releases, uh, we've got some on loans. Yeah, bit of a bit of a baffling one this, to be honest. Um, if you couldn't get enough of Donald Trump, hey, why not rent Home Alone too? <laughs> um, I mean, I was obviously going to give the person who rented it uh, a, a a long lecture about uh, you know the hypocrisy of renting this film considering the current climate that we are in. Um, but then they're six years old. So I, I didn't do that in the end. I didn't do that. Didn't think it would be appropriate. Um, but hey, you know, they'll learn in time. They'll learn. Um, my own private Idaho is out alone, which is amazing. One of my young lads took this last night, which is really, really cool to see. Brilliant Gus Van Zandt film. Uh, shocking that it's not on a, on a lavish Blu-ray edition by now, but I'm sure that will come. Although having said that, this was released on the Entertainment and Video label, and I know in this country they are renowned for kind of putting um, handcuffs on many of the films that they have acquired over the years, with The Passion of Darkly Noon being one of them. Uh, I was threatened and accosted into uh, having this film in the on loan section this week. This is uh, uh, a rental by Mr. Mr. Grinnell. Uh, who said, you need to put this in your own section because people need to know how amazing it is. And it is an amazing film. Written, of course, by Frank Darabont and Chuck Russell, the director. Um, it's a great, it's one of the few remakes who... Uh, is mountains above the original. Mountains above the original. It's very, very cool indeed. And over here, it's not even on DVD. We have to rent this Aussie Blu-ray out to people who want to watch it. And there are plenty of people who want to watch it. In fact, The Blob remake is probably one of my biggest renting horror movies uh, over the last five years. It, it, it goes gangbusters. Uh, similar with this, I mean, The Dentist. I mean, I have this over over there on an on a import uh, Blu-ray from America, out the, 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 the two films. But to think this this is stuck on an out of print DVD with no Blu-ray is just a shocking uh, thought because it's an amazing little horror film with Corbin Burns and I think he's brilliant uh, in it. Uh, a couple of little indie films went out this week that I'm really pleased to see renting. We have um, certainly what I think is one of the most powerful true stories in, uh, in recent years. This is uh, Out of the Blue. Terrifying, terrifying um, uh, reconstruction of events in New Zealand. Uh, absolutely brilliant film. It's getting over eighteen years old now, but uh, it's uh, yeah one of the just just a, a brilliant uh, true crime story that uh, needs to be seen. This hasn't gone out in an age, but Lee has rented it at the moment. I hope he likes it. It's got a great cast. You got Gary Oldman and Paddy Considine. And it's called The Backwards. Um, the quote on the back from blockbuster.co.uk says, Straw dogs meets dead man's shoes. Not too sure about that, but uh, it's, it's a very, very good film. Uh, Mark rented this yesterday. And um, I completely forgot that George A. Romero directed it. Completely forgot that. I haven't seen this film in a long, long time. And uh, it just reminded me when he brought it to the counter that I must uh, must rectify that situation. I must check that out. And one of the last films to rent out last night, uh, my good friend Jay asked for uh, And Soon the Darkness, sorry, um, which is a really, really cool film written by the iconic Brian Clemens. It was remade, um, wasn't it, a few years back? I forget who was in it. Um, and it wasn't bad. But this, this original, which of course was directed by Robert Frost, is a very, very good movie indeed. So that's a little glimpse of what's been renting at your local movie rental store this week. Let's have a look at what's been arriving. Um, yeah. 
Yeah, so we have, <laughs> this is, this is a crazy one. This is a crazy, uh, yeah, just, uh, the biggest belief, I just get, I don't get frustrated because I'm far too laid back to get frustrated. But I, I just have a, a shake of the head every now and then. Um, at the just, the the idiocracy, to quote Mike Judge's movie, at, um, at just the world, really. Um, you know, you look at those four Blu-rays that I was keen to buy at the start of the week that were, that were penciled in for this week, and you write to the film company and they don't respond. I say, right, well, I want to spend my money on your product, but you don't want to respond to me. That, that's quite frustrating. And this is another frustration, really. I ordered for the first time from Rare Waves, rarewaves.com, who are fine. You know, you cannot question their level of customer service. They responded uh, very quickly when I um, when I uh, harangued them. Uh, and, and, you know, can't complain about that. I'm just going to shove this one over here. Um... But you think to yourself, like, this is the Criterion sale, which was brilliant, 40% off. Railways offered you an extra 10% off, which I could not ignore. So I went for that 50% off Criterion. I mean, wow, that, that's great. So I picked up a dozen titles, all good. They shipped them out within maybe four or five working days. That's fine by me. But then they sent them without tracking and all in individual envelopes. It just baffles me. It baffles me that you're spending 150 quid or whatever, and someone can't add tracking. You know, I order from you know someone like Strange Vice, for example, Scottish genius retailer, and I order one disc, and he will slap tracking on it, and I will get information about where that parcel is at every second of every day. But you got a big thing about this, and they can't slap a tracking on it. They can't put it in one box. They say, oh, yeah, but it's more cost-effective to put it in individual cases. But is it, though? Is it, though? Just weird. Just weird behaviour. So, of my Criterion stash, I have received six titles. Half. I got one on Thursday, uh, four on Friday, one on Monday. And some were due today, but I've been shut, so they were refused delivery, apparently. So they'll be here tomorrow. But it's just a weird way of doing things. And it's kind of put me off ordering from that company again. Which is a shame, because first impressions, as you know, cliche, uh, count for a lot. But never mind, here we are anyway. So, the six, <laughs> six criteria that have um, arrived, mainly all upgrades for me, mainly all upgrades. This is the one that isn't an upgrade, though I never had this film in the store. It's a film called Smooth Talk by uh, Juice Chopra. It stars, um, oh, blank. Oh, Laura Dern. Laura Dern and uh, Tim, is it Tim? Treat Williams. Treat Williams. Who, of course, sadly just died last year, didn't he? Or this year. Um, and it sounds a brilliant. It sounds like a brilliant, brilliant movie. Um, I can't wait to watch it. Um, you know, Laura Dern is a fifteen-year-old black sheep of a family, uh, and she has these th th this encounter with a mysterious stranger, played by a, a very menacing Treat Williams, um, and it just kind of captures sexual exploration, coming of age, um, and then takes it to sort of the next level of troubling uh, behaviour. Uh, it won the Grand Jury Prize at Sundance back in 85. It looks amazing. I can't wait to watch it. So that, that's the newbie among the lot. Uh, then we have upgrades to five easy pieces. Can't beat some more Bob Rafelson. Uh, Chaplin. I've had my Chaplin DVDs there for years and years and years and years. I thought, well, let's upgrade. Um, so City Lights is the first one to come in. I'm waiting for two more from that Criterion Collection and from RareWaves.com. Um, so yeah, City Lights is in on Blu-ray. We have Repulsion, um, which will go nicely with the uh, UHD of the Tenant that came in from Vinegar Syndrome. Uh, Jim Jarmusch's Down by Law is in, which will go sit very nicely aside um, the other John Moose that came in the other week on Criterion, which was wasn't Mystery Train, it was the other one. Um, no, can't think. 
And we have uh, Secrets and Lies by Mike Lee, which is my favourite Mike Lee film of all time. I've seen it numerous times, never loses its edge. Uh, brilliant Timothy Spall, Brenda Blethyn have never been better. So yeah, they're my six criterions, half the lot. Hopefully the rest will show up tomorrow sometime, so you can take a look at those on next week's show. I've uh, got to thank Nathan for this one. This this uh, My missing parcel, my, my, my missing parcel with my Mike Mendes movies. Declared missing by the courier, showed up ten days later. Just weird, just weird, just baffling behaviour, honestly. When you think of the money these couriers get, um, I don't mean the drivers, I mean the couriers, uh, company. Or the business they get. And, oh, sometimes they wind you up. But yeah, uh, Nathan was very, very kind, and he said that come and see, the American criterion of come and see, is multi-regional and yes it is indeed it is region a and region b so i mean my my old dvd of come and see has been sat there for probably well how long how long it must be 15 years since it came to dvd probably more probably 20 years and it's been rented like hell as it should be so to get this upgrade when i didn't even know it was region friendly is very very exciting indeed so that's great please to add that to my criterion collection uh this was a really cool price uh on amazon i think it dipped down to 9.99 uh sorry ten dollars so i couldn't refuse that it's the george roy hill film uh, little drummer girl so that's an excellent addition to one archive uh this is my first uh dip into i mean i, I already get all of the Film Masters Blu-rays, which are awesome. But this is my first Film Masters Archive Collection uh, Blu-ray, which uh, don't get the same lavish treatment as the standard uh, Blu-rays, but they're still, they're still really intriguing films. This is a exploitation film from 1976 original feature, uh, limited to 1,500 copies even though they only uh, they advertise 500 originally. Um, this is Redneck Miller. Uh, it does include liner notes and a feature length commentary by Justin Humphreys, so it's not bare bones by any means, but I do like a bit of 70s exploitation. so looking forward to checking that out. Looks great, looks great. Okay, finally, uh, in this batch of uh, new arrivals, we have some water archives. Uh, Hoa! Huh, uh, from last week, the Ken Russell film, which is now out alone, uh, with Danny, no less. Danny was after a whore, and I gave it to him. Um, we have uh, more Teresa Russell from 1990 in Impulse. Impulse, directed by Sandra Locke, no less, who at the time was divorcing or separating from Clint Eastwood. Um, yeah, uh, Impulse looks great. Uh, I do like, love a good uh, undercover cop story, and with the addition of Jeff Farhi and George Zunza, then we can't go wrong. Uh, this this water archive didn't even scan into my database because it wasn't registered. Uh, it's Wayne Morris. Wayne Morris, are you familiar with Wayne, Wayne Morris? Have you seen any Wayne Morris movies? Wayne Morris is kind of a typical cowboy, you know, war hero, went into acting and um, made loads and loads of movies. Um, and it's just good to dabble in these people. Just good, I mean, you can't get all of Wayne Morris's features of all his cowboy movies, but you know, just to dabble, just to get a couple, it just gives you a flavor of someone who has been lost to time. So it's kind of a cool addition to the one archive section, as is this. It's The Cobweb, a... Um, Vincent, uh, Vincent Minnelli uh, film starring Richard, which oh, Jesus, Richard Widmark and Lauren Bacall and Gloria Graham, no less, and Lillian Gish. Wow, what a cast! Um, and it's set inside a psych facility. What could be better? I say, what could be better? So, that's a nice, nice little collection of newbies there. Eh? Nice little collection of newbies. Pleased with those. Now these, this is my Germany stash. Oh, they are all here, they are all here. 
Uh, my Germany stash. No, they're not. They're two missing. Sorry, two missing. Uh, I've featured Germany on the show in the past. And like I say, that if anyone has got a, a love for stuff that just isn't available over here, then Germany is the place to go. Um, check it out. The prices are nuts as well. Really crazy cheap for many, many Blu-rays. Uh, I've listened... I've subscribed, I've subscribed to the Video Archive podcast, because um, it is pretty much virtually, I, you know, I listen to like three podcasts, and Video Archives is, yeah, head and shoulders, uh, no offence, anyone. Um, and on the first episode, Roger and Quentin talked about Narrow Margin, the Gene Hackman movie, and uh, I had it on DVD anyway, um, but I thought, yeah, let's have a little upgrade on that. Uh, it's got an audio commentary on there by its director, Peter Hyams. So I thought, yes, let's go for that. Um, exciting. Uh, and I'm sure it'll rent out like like mad, to be honest. That's great. So narrow margin in on Blu-ray. Now, this is another kind of situation. I mentioned about um, Land of Bad before. So many films come out in Germany on Blu-ray that don't stand a chance of getting a, a release over here because they're tied up on Prime or wherever, uh, which is just so frustrating. Uh, it seems to be okay in Germany that a film can be on Prime Video or, or you know, a Prime exclusive and not not uh, come to physical over here, but in Germany, completely the opposite. A film shows up on Prime, it always comes to physical, or certainly most of the time. Uh, a big fan of Michael Keaton. Uh, away from his Batman stuff. So I thought A Killer's Memory, a film that he directed himself, um, really does sound like a very cool film indeed, so looking forward to that. you got uh, James Marsden in this as well, and uh, Marcia Gay Harden and Al Pacino. So, uh, yeah, really pleased to get this in. Should be a, a nice little addition to the uh, library. Uh, we have the new Liam Neeson film, which I have seen, and it, it's fine. Uh, it's your typical Liam Neeson uh, stuff, but with a bit of an Irish twist. Uh, good cast again, Colm Meaney, Kieran Hines, uh, Jack Gleeson. Um, so yeah, that's the new Liam Neeson film, and people love Liam Neeson. Uh, and Jason, <laughs> Jason, I mean, it's what I said the other week, isn't it? You know, the thing that people come in for who aren't, getting satisfaction here at the moment are people coming in for Liam Neeson and Jason Statham films. So we have a Liam Neeson film and we have the new Jason Statham film as well, directed by David Ayer no less. What did David Ayer direct? Was it Training Day, maybe? Um, and yeah, uh, looks great. Uh, written by Kurt Wimmer as well. So that's the new Jason Statham film, The Beekeeper. And also, want this thing is a Netflix movie. I think this is a Netflix movie. So to get this on Blu-ray is really, really very cool indeed. It's the new film by Richard Linklater. Uh, Richard Linklater's section here is, is a big renter. Uh, I know that it wasn't called... Oh, yeah, it's called Hitman, wasn't it? Called Hitman on Netflix. So here it is under its alternate title, A Killer Romance. So, you know, you know how fragile this streaming nonsense is. And you know that any of this stuff could go uh, at the whim of some multi, multi-billionaire corporation. So, you know, let's, let's buy these things and let's have them on hard copy. Instead of like, giving these billionaires the responsibility over our art. Crazy. And also, finally, we have a couple of... Um, um, Asylum movies, because I love the Asylum. Uh, Sean Young and Eric Roberts. <laughs> Eric Roberts. That man needs to do more work. Eric Roberts star in DC Down. Yeah. Uh, directed by Jeff Mead. Jeff Mead is one of the better uh, Asylum movie uh, directors. So that's uh, DC Down. Uh, we, I know you've been waiting for this one. It's finally here. The third Transmorphers movie. Yes, Tom Old stars in Transmorphers 3. Mech Beasts. Can't wait. Can't wait. IMDb score of 2.2. But who cares? Who cares? Then we have 2025 Armageddon. 2025 Armageddon with Michael Pare. Ah, some of these people. 
it's great to see they're still alive. Um, no, I, I, obviously my my German is spotty since uh, GCSE, um, but I believe this is kind of like an Asylum Greatest Hits package in a movie. You know, what's not to love about that? Very cool indeed. I know that Danny asked for this. He was on a um, Walter Hill trip a while back, um, and I didn't have the Long Riders. Well, I do now on Blu-ray too. Uh, thanks to those good old Germans, and I'm I'm always keen for a peplum. Uh, we have uh, Land of the Monsters, uh, as I said numerous times. It always baffles me how um, all the boutiques have tapped into Polizio Tesci, they tapped into Giallo, they've tapped into every facet of Italian genre film, including spaghetti westerns, but they've never gone into peplum or any of the Hercules films weird because you know who wouldn't want this movie with with uh, reg lewis that uh, icon a stage and screen okay quick trip through the comments quick trip through the comments uh, i did have a i did have a text i had a text i got a text um from chris who asked, is there any film that you've had trouble finding or you can't find or is there any film you need that, that you can't get hold of? Well, I mean, there's thousands of films. There's thousands of films that came out on video back in the days that have since disappeared and show no sign of coming up in, into DVD or Blu-ray or UHD, which is frustrating. But that's life. That's life. But in terms of stuff that's on DVD that I'm having trouble getting hold of, I don't know if anyone might spot any of these in charity shops or things like that, but um, it's weird stuff, weird stuff that I've been asked for that I just can't seem to get for the right price. It's out there, but I can't get it for the right price. One of which was um, Milk Money. Milk Money, was it, 94? Rennie Russo, I think. Ed Harris. Good little film, weird film. Um, but yeah, it's going for about 20 quid, can't justify that. So, Milk Money is one that's always on the agenda that I can't seem to grab. Another one is The Chase, uh, the Charlie Sheen film. Again, that's going upwards of £20 on DVD. Can't justify that. So, I'll pick it up sometime. You'll, I'll find one somewhere at a better price. And thirdly, I had a faulty, I had a scratched disc on the Zach... I've forgotten his name. I've forgotten his name. End of the tour, anyway, the end of the tour. Quite a recent film, relatively speaking. But for some reason, it's out of print on DVD and prices are sky high. Uh, so I had trouble getting hold of that. So, so yeah, there's a few DVDs that just kind of, yeah, just kind of drift around. That I just can't seem to pick up for the right price, but they're not essential by any means. But it would just be nice to take a scratch a line off my never-ending uh, wish list that gets added to every week. Okay, uh, Jonah Fish uh, spoke to me about the uh, Andrew L. Stone film, The Last Voyage, which was on last week's show. Had some incredible, some incredible ship sinking shots. That's a tongue twister. Um, movies around 90 minutes and move so quickly, they shot the film off the coast of Japan with a decommissioned cruise ship attached to cranes to create realistic looking sinking shots. Very cool indeed, Jonah Fish. Thank you for that. I can't wait to watch The Last Voyage. Yeah, it looks fantastic. Uh, CJ says, Film of the Week for me has been Look Back on Amazon Video. Don't swear, please. Uh, 59 minutes, it's really beautiful and profound. A question, if I may. You may. Do you have any recommendations for multi-regional Blu-ray players? I love Tokusatsu TV shows. Uh, the United States had box set releases of quite a few of them, and they're region locked. Um, no. <laughs> I have no idea. I just go on Amazon, type in multi-regional, and I just pick one. Uh, you know, for someone who is obsessed with films, I'm the least technical person. I know some of you curate the... the your, your sound systems and your viewing systems to such a an infinite level but I, I, I'm just a plug and play I'm just yeah it looks good get that one 
Yeah, that looks good. That's, that's fine. Does it play DVDs? Yeah, that's fine. Just get that one. That's me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, just, I'm a terrible person. Um, but I, I don't care. As long as I see a picture, I'm fine with it. Um, but no, I, I literally, my last multi-regional Blu-ray player, I just picked the cheapest one. <laughs> and it, it was a Sony. It was about 120 quid. And it's fine. Uh, I tend to have fairly good luck with stuff like that. He says it breaks the second I get home tonight. Um, but no, it, it's been fine. So I just picked the one that comes top of the Amazon list. It's about 120, I think. But Sony, good for me. Fine for me. Uh, James says I have Naked Lunch on VHS, but I have no recollection of buying it. I don't even have a video recorder. That's strange, James. Uh, and Franco Esco says the Borderlands movie is a train wreck. So may get some traction on disc for that. Uh, Roth walked out and went off to do Thanksgiving. Uh, the guy did the first Deadpool did reshoots. Um, <laughs> Jeez. Just looks like an absolute mess. Well, it's been in for six days. Uh, has the Borderlands. Uh, and finally... I had a guinea pig. Sorry, no offence, uh, Mark. Uh, Mark rented it yesterday, so um, for for his son, uh, no one else. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what he thinks of it. To be honest, no one else has rented it yet. It just sat there gathering dust. Okie dokie. Before we finish, we'll just have some um, sleeping giants this week. Well, I think last week we did W's, and we did W's. Uh, three W's, so I'm going to go backwards in the alphabet because that's my kind of logic. So I'm going to do three U's, three U's, which I think are fairly good films that don't seem to rent too much. Um, we have Undertaking Betty. Never had a release in this country. Bizarrely, even though it's a British film. Um, it's, it's really funny. It's a really funny comedy. Look at Chris Walken's hair. Look at Chris Walken's hair. That's all you need to know. Um, Hollywood Reporter said four funerals and a wedding there we go but look at the cast Brenda Blethyn Alfred Molina Naomi Watts Lee Evans Chris Walken crazy and directed by Nick Huron as well so that's Undertaking Betty very funny film nobody has ever rented it I don't think which is scandalous uh, I'm a big fan of Tom McLaughlin, the director of Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. He's done some amazing films that never get any, well, never get him any credit. He's kind of just remembered as the Jason guy, which is frustrating. I had a great phone interview with him a few years back for the 88 films Blu-ray of One Dark Night. And I asked him all about his other films, which I think was a blessed relief for the poor man. And this is one of his best. It's it's The Unsaid with Andy Garcia and Terry Polo. And it is just a mega, mega film. Just a brilliant thriller. Absolutely brilliant thriller that deserves more attention. It, it's amazing. and But it's just one of those that has kind of drifted completely under the radar for the last two decades. Which is bananas. Um, and finally, uh, this is a, I like this film, The Upside of Anger. I'm a big fan of Kevin Costner. Um, I know he's kind of become cool with uh, his desire to do that new Horizon uh, epic that he's doing. And I know Yellowstone has brought some credibility to him. I think he was a bit naff at one point, wasn't he? I really always liked him. Uh, I had a degree of respect for him. Um, but this was um, this was a film that Mike Binder director Mike Binder is one of those weird guys who made three films in the space of a year or two and I, I don't think we ever heard from him again with the three really good films as well one was um Rain Over Me the other uh, another was The Upside of Anger I forget the third but that was good as well and yeah he just kind of fell off the radar which is bizarre because I really liked his writing and directing but there we go but yeah Upside of Anger is one that I would um heartily recommend uh, in this week's Sleeping Giants which are three films that just don't seem to be renting when they should be finally we're going to throw up throw up throw off with uh, my throw up actually uh, with some uh, VHS the be damned they should be on Blu-ray these days now first up is a cool little horror film 
from uh, the mid 90s, 95 to be precise. It is voodoo. Voodoo. Uh, it is what it says. It's about voodoo. <laughs> uh, directed by Rene Iram, who I reached out to for a book a couple of years back, and he sent me a, sent me an email back saying I do not want to speak about this movie. I have moved on. My life has moved on. Please do not contact me again. Um, but it, it, it's a cool little horror film. It stars Corey Feldman and Jack Nance, I think, in his very last role, his last role before um, Lost Highway. Good little film. Deserves a little bit more attention. Uh, this is a TV movie, so likely we'll never see it on any format other than VHS. It's rattled. It's a great great snake movie great snake movie with uh, William Catt and of course it's directed by Tony Randall who made um, one of the Hellraiser films number two was it and also uh, Ticks brilliant horror movie but Rattled is a great snake movie and uh, it's a PG can't be scary it's a PG it's great it's really really good I thoroughly recommend it so if it's drifting around on any of those um, ad infested streaming sites like um whatever they are to be or whatever. check it out it's good and finally uh, an erotic thriller that is great one of the best one of the best it's a natural cold killer uh, it's not called that at all <laughs> it's not called that at all um it's a fred and ray film um and it, 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 it's just just brilliant you've got um margo hemingway in it you've got michael nori and um yeah, for some reason they changed the title over here to um, Natural Cold Killer. What? I don't know what. Maybe. Yeah, just, just weird. Why do they, why do they do that? It doesn't make any sense. I mean, this is the original artwork here. Which, as you can see, um, really cool. Inner Sanctum. Uh, I think it was a sequel too, wasn't it? Was it Inner Sanctum 2? Matthew Bedrovich knows all of this beyond me. But Inner Sanctum was a great erotic thriller. Uh, and that's it. And I just wish some of these erotic thrillers would come to a format other than VHS, because they do deserve to. But we are moving towards increasingly conservative times that we cannot deal with any degree of nudity on screen, because it's so shocking and abhorrent. Um, but, yeah, madness. Anyway, that's enough from me. Um... Thank you again for watching. Uh, please keep the comments incoming. And, um, yeah, anything you want to ask, anything you want to see, anything you want to do, anything you want to talk about, please give me a shout. And, um, yeah, I'll see you in seven days' time.